Hello, I'm Maury Gertz, a 30-year myeloma researcher. I'm currently chair of the Department of Medicine at Mayo Clinic Rochester. I believe this year's ASK proves that we're moving very close to a cure for myeloma, having converted it to a chronic disease for which we should expect long-term survival for the majority of our patients. There have been some breakthrough presentations at this year's ASH, three of which relate specifically to the immense value added by autologous stem cell transplantation. In a presentation as a late-breaking abstract, the Chemotherapy Trials Network uh, has presented a three-arm trial that showed that an autologous stem cell transplant with maintenance lenalidomide was as effective as an autologous stem cell transplant followed by consolidation followed by lenalidomide and as effective as two transplants followed by maintenance lenalidomide. Further information will be required to determine if certain subsets of patients, high stage or adverse genetics, have differential benefit. But for now, the standard of care appears to be a single transplant followed by maintenance lenalidomide. However, data prevented, presented by the French demonstrates that tandem transplant was superior to a single transplant for patients who show high-risk features, typically adverse genetics in multiple myeloma. Another trial demonstrated that a single autologous transplant was of particular value in patients who have revised international stage one. In summary, stem cell transplant in the era of novel agents remains a critically important treatment modality for our patient population with multiple myeloma. In addition, we saw two presentations on the new triplet combination of carfilzomib, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone, which shows remarkable activity. Moreover, it produces a significant stringent complete response rate, which is known to predict for prolonged survival and produces minimal residual disease or MRD negativity, which also improves survival. The monoclonal antibody daratumumab is now undergoing trial to look at its use subcutaneously. Daratumumab is fraught with problems due to infusion-related reactions that can often take up to 12 hours. But a subcutaneous infusion that can be given over two hours will improve dramatically the ability to administer this agent in the outpatient setting. New antibodies have been developed to antigens, proteins found on the surface of the myeloma cell. Antibody to BCMA has shown to have activity that is B cell maturation antigen. Moreover, antibody to BCMA has also been attached to the T cell to produce a as called chimeric antigen receptor or CAR T cell. Further CAR T cell research is undergone with the use of BCMA and it's extremely exciting producing deep responses in heavily pretreated myeloma patients. A number of brand new drugs have been reported to be active in myeloma. Venetoclax, a BCL2 inhibitor administered orally three times a week, shows a remarkable activity in heavily pretreated patients that have the translocation 1114. Selenexor shows activity, also an oral drug in patients who failed five drugs, including thalidomide, pomalidomide, lenalidomide, bortezomib, and carfilzomib, yet still a significant response rate was seen. The PD-1 inhibitor, pembrolizumab, this antibody to the program death antigen also is now showing activity when combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, an exciting new addition to the armamentarium for myeloma patients. Two important trials on patients with renal insufficiency, so-called myeloma cast nephropathy, who present in about a quarter of patients with multiple myeloma. One, the introduction of a high flux dialyzer that immediately removes light chains from the blood and promotes healing of the kidney. And in that trial, the use of that dialyzer 
demonstrated a significantly higher proportion of patients dialysis free at six months. Wonderful news for patients with myeloma that present with kidney failure. A second abstract showed the safety and efficacy of stem cell transplant in myeloma patients who present with significant impairment of their kidney function. From an imaging standpoint, the importance of the FDG PET-CT scan was shown to have powerful predictive value in the prognosis of patients with multiple myeloma and is now being incorporated into trials as an important endpoint, that being complete negativity of the FDG PET after therapy with and without stem cell transplant. In smoldering multiple myeloma, a trial has been presented looking at a three-drug combination for high-risk smoldering multiple myeloma patients that combines elotuzumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone with a very high response rate and could portend a new era in the management of patients with smoldering multiple myeloma. All in all, this ASH has provided true breakthrough discoveries for the role of transplant, new drugs, CAR-T, renal failure and smoldering multiple myeloma. I think that the myeloma patient community should take great deal of solace in the fact that this field is moving forward quickly and cure should be expected in our lifetime.